So this is the third installment of the series on James. And I have to admit that this is a harder topic because it has to do with money. And we often skirt those topics as much as we can in the church. And uh, it makes life a little more comfortable. But James comes down in chapter 1, verses 9, and says, The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. But the one who is rich should take pride in his low position, because he will pass away like a flower. For the sun rises and with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossoms falls. Its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Wow. I mean, it sounds like James has something against rich people. And where, we grew, where I grew up, there was a, a side of town that was nicer than the other side of town. And it was uh, nicer houses, uh, the more rich lived there. Uh, some of us would call it snob knob because those with money uh, usually war with them and arrogance because of their position. On the other side of the Missouri Pacific tracks then was uh, another group of people. They were not quite so high and mighty. And it didn't make a lot of difference in school, but it did make some as to who you were friends with. And maybe you grew up in some circum some similar circumstances. What I find ironic is in the last oh, 15, 18 years, those railroad tracks are gone. The separation between the two is gone. And I really believe that's what James is doing here. Because he goes on in verse 12 and says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Now, let's face it. Whether you think you're a rich person or a poor person, you're either more rich than somebody else or you're more poor than someone else. So the concept of rich and poor it really isn't the crux of the matter. We live in North America. And when you think of it from a global perspective, we're more rich than 80% of the rest of the world. So how does this apply to us other than the fact that we are blessed when we persevere under trial? And that goes all the way back to James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you're mature and complete, not lacking anything. If you're a Christian, you know the love of God. And you know that in his mighty craftsmanship, there's nothing in this life that surprises him, even the trials that come our way. Do we consider those trials as ways that God is trying to bless us? That through those trials, we actually may end up more blessed, richer, if you will, than if those trials had not happened. And notice the blessing in this is that God has, that he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. In other words, it seems like loving him means that we're going to flip a trial into a triumph. Because some, God, some way or another, God's put it there for that reason. So I want you to discuss, if you will, the thought about, are you rich or are you poor? When you think about James 1, 9 through 11. And then think about that in re reference to whether the trials that you're per presently going through could, in one way or another, bless you. Like God wants to bless you. Can we really 
flip our thinking in such a way that even the most dire of circumstances, whether we're rich or poor, slave or free, is done in such a way that God blesses us through it. Think about it. 